Double-edged question. I read, okay, I read yesterday about Riverdale. I'm not asking about Riverdale. Okay, sure. Here's a double-edged question. The appeal of this show specific sure. to you, and how many shows does Greg Berlant need on the air all the time? Uh, but anyway, go ahead. First of all, uh, the appeal of this for me was working with, really at the outset, I was begging Martin to work with us for a long time. And so uh, he came in, and uh, we started the conversation with, you know, what is, uh, what's if you could only make one show, which is really where I start, like, what show would you make? You know, what are you most passionate about? And he told the story. And he also talked a lot about how he had made treasure maps as a kid and was just always into um, thrillers and mysteries. And he was so passionate about it. And then it was such a captivating story that it was, that's really kind of where, how I determine what um, I'm going to be a part of these days. You know, if someone's really passionate about something, um, that's a very rewarding, I'm blending into your next question. It's a very uh, rewarding thing for me is to, is, and, uh, um, and what gives me a lot of energy uh, is working with people who are, you know, have a real vision of, of something they want to do. Um, and, and so we didn't set out to have multiple shows on the air, honestly, so much as, as just to uh, keep finding ways to work with uh, artists who are really passionate about their stories that they want to tell. Roberto, who, who's doing Riverdale, is the creative officer, lead creative officer of Archie Comics. And uh, there's nobody more, I promise you, there's nobody more paraphernalia and like uh, Archie paraphernalia and more of a passion for that. And so that's sort of how, uh, you know, uh, we and we developed that script um, that went over to CW last year when we did this uh, story too. And along with Martin's, uh, uh, along with Martin's draft it was you know two of my favorite scripts that we did last year so I'm nice that I'm glad that it kind of happened. Can we back up a minute and get your sure. name and Oh yeah my name is Greg Berlanti and I'm an executive producer of Blindspot. I'm curious about that because obviously it is a team effort you know, yes. and you're one part of that but they're particularly using your name to push this show. How is that for you when all of a sudden you're kind of the primary creative selling point like in all the advertising and everything is it weird? Sure I think they may just be doing that here a little bit just because it's Comic Con yeah. I've done comic book stuff to be honest. Uh, I'm not sure uh, how it, you know that it plays in Dubuque, um, but uh, uh, so but but um, you know that's that's that, that's interesting or fun or whatever. But I, it's much more about the to me the the people that are a part of it uh, and the quality of the thing. I think it's like it really speaks for itself. Um, I'm you know uh, Martin Garrow is the leading creative force of the show, and it's my job uh, to support him in whatever way possible and to challenge him and and uh, uh, and but to be his partner but uh, it, it wouldn't uh, he's he's really the the reason why everybody that's loving the show uh, loves it and so um, you know I guess sometimes it's uh, I, I'm happy whatever they got to do to get the word out but um, um, but it's really the show that has to speak for itself. And I have to ask um, the standard Bernanke question is is this show going to cross over to anything else? <laughs> Uh, um, n not as of yet, um, uh, but that would be fun and interesting, wouldn't it? Uh, no, 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 no plans. I'm, I'm not quite sure how it would, um, but um, ever go to work with them? Exactly. <laughs> it would be an interesting hey, match. He's crossing over with a million things in comics. Right. Yeah, that, oh no, they're, they're, he's doing that brilliantly. I think that the, the reinvention of that uh, of that comic is like one of the more exciting things happening in comics right now. Yeah. Like, what was in Martin's pitch that you saw something you could really expand on that like the engine of the show? What did you see in the picture? Probably just a, 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 a slightly heightened world that we could still make grounded with the characters uh, and, and, a, and a, 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 a exciting adventure, but something that's still really a narrative that was really emotionally compelling in that she was, you know, you, you really felt felt for her, even though she was also incredibly capable and talented. But she was really vulnerable too, and I liked that duality. I really liked, and, and that is something that really intrigued me storytelling-wise to participate in. You said slightly heightened world there. Do you see it? Does it go sort of science fiction, fantastical? No, when I say heightened, I sort of mean just whenever you're doing any kind of action thing, you know, bombs are going off and people are getting shot at and they don't die. You know, um, that 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 uh, is is a bit more heightened. You know, not as heightened as somebody with superpowers. You know, the capability to, to run really fast, but. Um, but no, it's 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 more in the probably in that born vein, which is how we talked about Arrow in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about how the relationship between Jane and Kurt will evolve throughout yeah. the season? That's I, I think that's one of the more compelling things about the pilot, and was for me in the, in the pitch, and also is in the series, in that it's you kind of. You, 
you know, everything you think you'll know and understand about them, it's like, you know, they'll be, uh, and it works on every level. It works on the level that, the basic level that his name's on her back, you know, it works as them as partners in terms of whatever that sort of action adventure element is. Uh, and then, you know, you can't help but have those two actors on the screen and not think that there's romantic chemistry or sexual chemistry too. So there's a lot of levels to it. And I think, uh, I think as each one of those things uh, are going to get, you know, I think poked out and explored. How do, how do you balance? This is for the rest of your shows. Sure. Not necessarily this one. Yeah, that's fine. Um, how do you balance the light versus the dark act, darker right. aspects of the sh of the shows you're producing? Because yeah. like Arrow is sort of yeah, dark they each have their and own kind of kind DNA. Of like yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, they're very reflective of the people that are working on the show in that way. You know, uh, sometimes, but. Um, what I mean by that is something like Blind Spot, you know, if you've had a chance to talk to Martin, he's like, he does the procedural element, but he's also really funny. And so there's a lot of great in the scripts that they still have those kind of one liners, but they're a very grounded kind of world and situation. But the humor in that show is different than, say, the humor on something like Flash. Or the, you know, I think it's also what defines that a lot of times is sort of the, the balance of emotional things you're asking the audience to do. So here it's like, it's, there's a thrilling action adventure, but there's that charge of, of you know, who is she? And, uh, that dynamic between the personal relationship between her and Weller, I think, defines a lot of the tone of the show. Uh, and each shows its own thing, and you got to kind of figure it out quick and do more of it, you know? So what was it about Jamie that, you, that made you think this is the one for this part? You know, it's, I always get, for me, I always get the same thing when I meet with those actors. That you, It's that we cannot let them leave this office until they say yes to doing the show. Uh, and, and part of that is because you just you get addicted to that, you know, like that's the, so that even when you may have an episode that's not as strong because you're doing so many of them or you're trying but you don't always hit the bullseye, you know, the, the actors are so many times the thing pulling us through and making us have to watch, you know, and they add that, it's, it's we watch the dailies and what they're doing and then we write, you know, you work even harder to sort of like try and do something cool and interesting because they can kind of do anything. And she has that capacity and so that was, she had all those elements and, and she was just so captivating that we couldn't, didn't want to let her leave the office. Can you talk a little bit about how we're going to see her gain her memory back? How does that work out? In fits and starts, um, but it's, it's not, uh, you know, you, you don't even know how accurate that is, right? Because the way she was washed, you know, um, are these fantasies, you know, I mean, like, there's a lot of things we think in our head that may not be a memory, you know. Memory is such a bizarre, it's such an interesting, complex thing to begin with, uh, you know, in terms of its accuracy. And so there's lots of great, I think, uh, pieces of that. But there'll be a lot of memories over this first, you know, bunch of episodes, but, you know, what they're telling her may not always be the truth. What, what do you think makes up a person? Is it memory or is it just your innate character? It's a lot of things. I think it's a good question only because it's the show gets to ask those very primal questions every week because she's going through something that even though she's a fully formed adult, it's very like almost like a childlike in that way of like, who am I? Am I a good person? Am I a bad person? What have I done? Does that make me a good person or a bad person? I think I think the questions are probably more interesting to me than, than I could give you real accurate answers for. Um, uh, and I think the show gets to ask those questions. I think that's, that's exciting. That's so much uh, that he was serious to me as you know, casting out the tattoos right. and watching her try to remember who she was and build this new identity. You know, what am I liking now? What am I preferring? How am I reacting to this? Yes. That's as much as it feels to me of watching her build herself in addition to finding yes. who she is. So that the, element is... She is reborn, right? So yes. she's like you're watching, you know, someone uh, that, that, that's a really uh, very basic emotional thing we can connect with when we watch the show and and it works as a nice counterpart with watching you know she sometimes she's discovering those things in really like you know opportune moments you know that, oh I can beat the shit out of this guy you know uh, oh you know and exactly exactly and so I think that that is an exciting thing that that also lends itself to some of the more heightened elements that you know we were mentioning but so you still want to find a way to make it feel real and and obviously that's that's why she's such an exciting actress so she makes it feel real and, and I would be remiss if I didn't ask because in my defense I read five different answers to 
this question. What's that? I've read five different, different answers to the question. Okay, sure. Okay. Is Supergirl going to cross over the arrow in the match? I don't know yet, you know? I mean, I, I um, you've read five different answers from me? Um, I pretty much always say the same thing, which is anything's possible. Uh, you know, uh, the network, uh, the networks would have to agree to it. I think both shows, uh, the show would have to, it has to be successful in its own right. And, um, um, you know, uh, no one's saying yes yet, but we haven't asked, you know? Um, uh, but I, but, but, um, I, I know, I, I always say this, as a fan, that would be, I think it'd be super cool, but we're not at that place yet with the show. Because it is part of the same universe. Well, DC universe, but not necessarily. We haven't established on our, either Flash or Arrow, that there's a girl in National City who can fly. So so in that way, uh, that's not, it's, 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 they're not yet. Uh, but you never know. Okay. You talk about being a fan, I'm just curious on a personal level. Right. You're feeling about the fact that uh, if you now look back and sit there and say, potentially it's Flash or Arrow all these other characters, sure. Super, Supergirl, Riverdale, now possibly. Right. The, and you sure. Just as a fan, what's your feeling looking at this imaginary wall with all these pictures? Oh, I'm really lucky. Yeah. You know, that I'm really blessed. <laughs> I, was, I mean, I, that's, uh, I mean, no, I mean, it's, it's really, you know, I mean, that's, you know, I mean, it, oh, it could have gone the other way. <laughs> we could have, and so every, we have a lot of pressure, I think, to make sure that we, that we know how much, I know how much those characters are to other people too, and uh, and so we just try, and every day when we go to work and everybody comes to work, to really make sure that everyone, uh, that we're living up to the potential of those stories and those storylines. And that we're not just doing it so that we can add stuff to a wall, but that we actually are, you know, for a new generation of kids that are discovering it, you know, uh, or people that are rediscovering it, that remember why they love that character. Uh, all those things are, they give you real fuel and energy to do what we do. I can't get away from it, man. Yeah, it is. It really is. I've, still, I've got a six foot tall political animal poster in my ah. kitchen. Well, my friends just stole it for me. It's like, it's six foot tall. Where do I put this? In the kitchen every morning, man. I'm like, do you really? I do. I don't even have that. Because <laughs> I'm a huge James Wolf fan, so they stole oh, it out the really? bus shelter and like stuck it. That's everywhere. genius. My friends are But I wanted to ask you about this show specifically. Yeah. The new writer's dilemma is always how do you continue, you know, piecing up the mythology without taking off right. the people that are sitting around waiting for answers? So have you guys had that discussion with this show? Yeah, you have that conversation a lot, and uh, and I think Martin and, and the writers have really figured out ways to do it that they really stand on their own. The episodes stand on their own, but no one's going to feel unsatisfied as we, you know, especially as the year progresses, and uh, and I can only kind of point to some of the shows I've worked on before in that the years, the season should feel very complete by the end. It doesn't mean you get every question answered, but there, there is a beginning and an end to the narrative that will be told this season. And then can you talk a little bit about how important Comic-Con is to all your productions and sure. just what it's like for you to be here and become an icon? It's, I, would, that a little I bit think, yeah, no, I, mean, I would be here anyway, so it's obviously really fun to to be here in any regard um, uh, and you know I mean it's always the most the, the best part is interacting with people who love the shows and the characters and you don't get to do it in TV that much really you kind of are you work in a void you my mom's friends will let me know what they think but there's not you're not really interacting with a lot of people uh, and uh, you know except for you know your neighborhood of friends or whatever and so seeing how much the shows mean to people and stuff is, is very fulfilling and watching them the actors get that response is actually also really fulfilling for me because I know how hard they work and so watching them sort of like you know kids who look up to them and see them as like their version of Flash or Green Arrow or whatever that, that's really exciting release the Blu-rays earlier. What's that? Can you make them release the Blu-rays earlier? So I feel like a sucker. I just bought the Flash today for 19 bucks. Uh, but the Blu-rays are coming out in September. Uh, <laughs> earlier. I didn't even know that. See, that's, that's, you guys know more about the stuff than I do. I thought they got all released at the same time. Oh, wow. Uh, uh, I think if you had the capacity to blow up her body, <laughs> like, I think, yeah, there'll be a lot of, there'll be that. I, mean, we got it, I don't know if Martin mentioned, but there's a gentleman who works on the show who um, uh, helps build puzzles and, and whatnot for the New York and crosswords for the New York Times. Oh, cool. So there's really, there's going to even be uh, a re-examination of some of the tattoos that we've seen before so you learn how to see some of them in a new way. 
and there's some really exciting stuff like that. Does that give you some flexibility in plotting the series? Always. I mean, obviously, <laughs> it, was, it would be better if, we could, if she was two bodies. <laughs> but uh, um, because each tattoo represents an episode. How many seasons are already right, right? But they figured out ways to twist and turn it. Is sort of what I'm getting at. But yes. This one a lot. I was sort of impressed by the layers. There's just and very the fine print. You know? right, to watch that happen, watch the story between Jamie's body and then the whole person. Yes. Is that interesting for you? That's interesting. You know, I've never done that before. So uh, yeah, it was, and, and it's always a challenge whenever you do anything new like that because you kind of don't you don't know. Well, it's a lot of building inside your Exactly. Yeah. And 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 uh, so some of it, you know, we have. There's a lot of, 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 of tattooed Jamie around the office. Uh, so we, we look at it and get ideas. There's a map of Jamie. Now Jamie's on Exactly.